Hey everyone, welcome to day nine of the 10 day reset. Um, so today I wanted to talk about reintroducing gluten and reintroducing dairy and what that looks like. So we've been dairy free, gluten free for the last uh, nine days. And uh, just ask yourself some questions like, how are you feeling? You're feeling really good do you think that you may have a gluten sensitivity or you may have a dairy sensitivity um, and you know again I always say use your intuition like just think about when you used to have dairy or used to have gluten how you felt and do you think if you going forward sort of minimize the amount of dairy you're eating or minimize the amount of gluten you're eating can you feel better overall for some of us it means that we're just going to eliminate gluten and that in based on our body and our digestion and what symptoms we have we're just going to eliminate gluten because it makes us feel better maybe we don't have a gluten allergy but we do feel better if, we, if we're not eating gluten um and the reason is is that gluten um you know can cause a lot of harm on your digestive system and without eating it it gives your digestive system a chance to heal and then you just start to feel a little bit better and the same with dairy you know you can go uh, dairy free if you choose um, and a lot of people do that sometimes people take a step and they just go lactose free and they find removing lactose from their diet is really beneficial and it helps them feel a lot better so that might be a step that you take as well if you are feeling really good um, not having dairy you know is it the lactose or is it more of the proteins that are in the, the dairy foods it's hard to tell you kind of have to just do a trial and error and see so maybe the first step that you do is you is you choose lactose free products lactose free milk and lactose free cheese and um, if you feel okay having those and digestion's fine and inflammation's fine you're probably okay to continue but if you if you do notice inflammation and again pay attention a few days in a row how you're feeling um, then maybe you have to just reduce your your um, dairy consumption and that's gonna look different for a lot of us um, I know like for myself I can have dairy once a day and that's uh, that's good for me if I have it anymore I start to get acne I start to um, get a little puffy I can tell the inflammations there so I can um, kind of keep that at bay if I keep my dairy to once a day um, and some people can have dairy three times a day it doesn't bother them um, some people just need to eliminate it altogether. So again, pay attention how you feel. So how do you start to reintroduce gluten and dairy and, and know what effect is happening to you? And one thing that I like to do, this is a slow process. So I know it's a 10 day reset, but I also find it's good to, uh, if you can, you know, you've already done so much. So take some time here and reintroduce these foods and see how you feel. So whatever one that you are missing the most, if you're missing dairy the most, or you're missing gluten the most um, take one of them let's say dairy so take dairy and have dairy for breakfast and have dairy for lunch and uh, maybe even have dairy for dinner at least have it twice in the day and see how your body reacts see how how is your digestion when you have the dairy do you feel okay having the dairy um, noticing any inflammation and then the next day when you get up in the morning, um, get on the scale because sometimes inflammation shows up as water weight, not sometimes, most of the time, inflammation shows up as water weight. So um, if the scale has gone up a couple of pounds because you had dairy, uh, there's pro that's probably an indicator that your body is holding on to more water um, to deal with the inflammation that's happening. So there may be a sensitivity there. So that's one way of knowing. And then the other, if you don't notice anything happening after the first day, the second day, have dairy for breakfast, have dairy for lunch, at least have it twice in one day. Again, noticing, looking for any kind of symptoms. And I want you to do that for three days in a row. Have dairy twice a day. See if you notice anything. Usually by the third day, um, if we are sensitive to dairy, it's going to start to come out in our joints. We're going to feel it in our joint pain. Um, I know for me, it's my skin. Usually by day three, I feel it in my skin. Um, so I know it's just been a little, a little too much dairy for myself. Um, so it's usually about a three day. Sometimes it's four days for people. So introduce the dairy but give yourself three or four days to see the effect and how how it's affecting you you know if you are crippling in pain 
um, or crippling in inflammation or digestive upset, then you know dairy is not, not the thing for you. If you've just got a little bit of pain, a little bit of inflammation, um, maybe you can have dairy. You just have to have it in smaller amounts. So again, it's, it's just about having that variety of food and not consuming the same thing over and over again. Um, the same thing happens with gluten. So we're gonna have gluten, have gluten, like wheat products twice a day. See how your body feels. Get on the scale the next day. See if you're swollen up a little bit. Gain some water weight. How do your joints feel? How's your skin? Uh, how's your digestive system? And you wanna do that for three days. And again, just paying attention to how that affects you. How does gluten affect you? How does dairy affect you? And then going forward, deciding what is the, the best for you. Um, you know, if you just have a small sensitivity to it, that means you can still have it. You can still enjoy things like having ice cream on your flex meal, um, having a grilled cheese sandwich, something like that. If you're really sensitive to it, then maybe you might have to think about um, um, changing things up a little bit and going back to a gluten-free or dairy-free uh, diet just to help your system heal and it doesn't mean that you're going to be sensitive forever it could just be you know something that you do for three months and then you try it again if, if you go through this process and you find that you are sensitive to dairy or gluten um, try like go off of dairy and gluten go off of it for another month one of them or both of them whatever you find you are another month and then after a month reintroduce do the same test test it for three days how are you feeling um, sometimes it just takes our body a little bit of time to heal and maybe your body just needs a little bit more healing time and then you'll still be able to have it um, a little a, a little bit later um, I guess the one thing to think about is if that is you, if this is you, where you find that you were sensitive to gluten or you find that you're sensitive to dairy and you need to take a little bit of more time off before you can consume it, you may always be sensitive to gluten and you may always be sensitive to dairy. So it might be just quantities that you're having it in, in smaller amounts. So not having dairy three times a day, maybe you have it once a day, maybe you have it once every two days or once a week, something like that. So it's, it is a trial and error, so not 10 days, maybe a little bit longer, but I mean, it's just to give you some indicators of what is causing the aggravation in your system? What's causing the inflammation? What's causing the weight gain? And can we get to some of those root causes of food that might be causing those, those things? So something to, um, yeah, something to, to think about. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that if you are, you know, unsure, another step that you can take is a hair analysis. And that's something that I run as a practitioner. Um, well, I don't run it, sorry. I, I work with a lab who runs it. So the hair analysis tests for food sensitivities. It tests for non-food, like environmental sensitivities. Um, it also tests for... Um, uh, vitamin and nutrient deficiencies and also food additives sometimes um, what I find is interesting is um, some people might be okay with dairy products but in their food sensitivities report excuse me we will see that they are sensitive to a natto which is a dye that is put in cheese so maybe you're reacting to the cheese which you think might be from dairy, but it's actually from the dye from dairy. So it kind of lets us dig in a little bit deeper. My biggest um, take home with the hair analysis test is that variety is key. Variety is key. And if you are eating the same thing day after day after day after day, um, and even when we think about gluten and dairy, like it's just everywhere, right? Like we have cereal for breakfast, granola bar at lunch, sandwich for dinner, pasta, like gluten is part of our daily regime. Three, sometimes four meals a day, sometimes five meals a day. And the same with dairy, yogurt, sour cream, uh, cottage cheese, cheese, milk. It's just something that we consume all the time. So thinking about that variety, and we're so lucky this day and age that we have variety. We have, you've just experienced all of the gluten-free options out there. There's tons of gluten-free pastas out there. There's tons of gluten-free breads. There's tons of gluten-free noodles out there. Um, oh, I guess we just talked about pasta, but there's also um, like bean pastas. And the same for dairy. We've got almond milk and cashew and oat and, um, 
coconut and like milk and yogurts and ice creams so we really have lots of options going forward if you do find that you're sensitive to to a couple of those things so uh, if you're interested in a hair analysis just send me a message and we can uh, get started uh, with that it's quite interesting to see I usually get a couple done a year just to see what's happening it's gotten to the point now I, I kind of know what my sensitivities are and I know um, what the hair analysis is gonna say <laughs> before it comes back uh, because if you have the same thing like for me you know everybody know probably here knows that I have a chocolate addiction so I eat chocolate all the time if I'm experiencing some kind of inflammation and uh, like headaches for example I know it's chocolate I know it's chocolate because I eat so much of it so then I'll back off I don't need a hair analysis to tell me that but there's some other things that kind of pop up which are interesting and the vitamin deficiencies are really quite interesting as well too um, because you know if you're not feeling your best and you can't really put your finger on it it could come down to just a couple of vitamins that you're missing in your diet that uh, that can help you help you along help you feel a little bit better you supplement for a month you, you feel better and uh, you're, you're good to go. So anyway, if you're interested in that, let me know. Okay, tomorrow is day 10 and I will be back here tomorrow to say bye and steps moving forward. All right, bye everyone. Have a good day.